Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here and this is Titanfall 2's immense multiplayer mode in all of its glory. Okay, so I gave this title a quick look the other day and found access to the Xbox One version impossible owing to an EA account crash bug. If you have your EA account linked to your gamer tag, I don't think you should encounter this issue at all and I understand that EA is looking into finding out what's going on here if you don't, but I found that switching to another account solved the issue for me. Now we can truly test Titanfall 2 on both consoles to see if this game can indeed consistently hold its 60 FPS frame rate. And as I explained previously, this really is essential for this game. You see, Respawn has built a very specific gaming experience here, one that demands low latency and entirely consistent response from the controls. The team is trying here to recapture the core essence of what made the original Modern Warfare titles just feel so good to play, and that is a precision interface between the player and the code, powered by the lowest amounts of lag throughout the entire pipeline and capped off by something as close to an absolutely locked frame rate as possible. So the question is really, have they succeeded? If we go back to the Titanfall 2 beta, the game was looking strong, but whether you were playing on Xbox One or PS4, there could be performance problems. So let's start first on the Microsoft platform. General traversal and basic gameplay was already looking good there, but as the screen starts to fill with taxing explosion effects, frame rates suffer. And the situation was actually very similar, if not more pronounced, on the PlayStation 4, a really strong 60 FPS for the most part. But when the engine really hits its stress points, things start to look pretty grim with sudden lurches in the performance level of the game, and this is not good. Now what's clear from my earlier testing on the final retail code is that Respawn has dramatically improved the performance level, as you can see here as we switch into the PS4 release version metrics. Now I attempted to collate a big bunch of the most testing footage I could possibly collect by choosing the last Titan standing mode and often engaging in the most suicidal battles possible in order to produce the most intense combat and effects work as possible. Okay, so the results here are pretty awesome actually, but it's not an absolutely perfect 60 FPS, but the point here is that we've had to put the engine under exceptional load here in order to cause even small deviations from the target frame rate, and that's a remarkable achievement, bearing in mind that the beta is just two months old. In fact, I was speaking to Respawn over the weekend and they reckon that this is the most consistently locked 60 FPS experience they've ever produced, and bearing in mind that these are the same guys that were responsible for the original Modern Warfare Call of Duty titles, that is clearly significant. So it turns out that aside from optimization improvements, Respawn's big push into getting the game locked to 60 FPS comes from adopting a dynamic resolution frame buffer. In our initial look at the title, we thought that we were looking at a 720p, 900p split between Xbox One and PS4, but taking another look at the game reveals that the pixel count varies in the moment on both systems according to engine load. And you know what? This is actually good news for the most part, as generally speaking, the frame buffer tends to scale up higher than the beta, giving a slightly crisper image, but it also means that the resolution can drop down too, when effects work is really, really taxing the GPU. So Respawn has effectively traded pixels for frame rate and the gamble pays off. Gameplay is slick and frames are only dropped in the most extreme of situations, but it does mean that yes, PlayStation 4 will dip below 900p in these scenarios, even though we reckon overall there's actually a net gain to the overall pixel count on average. Now it's really tough to pixel count this game owing to the temporal anti-aliasing solution that kind of blurs off the edges, but we're pretty confident that Titanfall 2 on PS4 bottoms out at 720p while spending most of its time closer to 1000p. The end result is that while there is a compromise to image quality, there's very, very rarely any lag in the game whatsoever owing to performance dips because, well, to be frank, any kind of frame rate drop at all is extremely rare. Remember that we're engineering worst case scenarios here and by and large it's still holding up. But obviously questions need to be asked of Xbox One. Do we see the same overall increase in pixel count compared to the beta? And conversely, just how low does the resolution go when the engine is really stressed? Now what's clear is that in most modes, Respawn's resolution gamble still pays off handsomely. The game does indeed hold 60 FPS for the vast majority of the duration and resolution seems to average at around 820p or thereabouts. But yes, image quality can be hit hard and in the most intense areas 
years of gameplay, Resolution can dive. Now it's interesting to note that The Last Titan's standing game mode actually takes us on a different rotation of maps than I could get from the PS4 version. The crash site map in particular, I couldn't really avoid it on Xbox One, whereas it seemed impossible to access on the PS4. And this map in particular, it seems to show us the resolution drop at its worst, and it really doesn't look pretty. The temporal anti-aliasing solution seems to be working overtime here, making edges very indistinct and thus nerfing our ability to do an effective pixel count here, but clearly it is way below 720p here. But frame rate, well, frame rate still sticks to 60 FPS, and that's the point really. Image quality may well be compromised, but the quality of the interface between player and game remains rock solid for the most part, with only the most intense Titan on Titan action showing any kind of deviation. Respawn is clearly prioritising the quality of the gameplay experience over resolution, and bearing in mind the limited graphical resources in a fixed platform console box, I think it's the best call. And I will stress once more that these are tests that I've engineered to show Titanfall 2 at its absolute worst in terms of both performance and image quality. And I will stress once more that for the most part the frame rate is solid and resolution is actually generally improved over what we saw in the beta code a couple of months ago. And I've got to say that whether I've been playing on PC, PS4 or Xbox One, I've just had a great time with this game. Multiplayer, campaign, the whole package is simply superb and highly recommended. Now clearly the more powerful Power that you throw at the game, the better the overall presentation. So PC owners can select the resolution of their choice of course, and maintain 60 FPS as long as they have the GPU power to handle it. While I would expect PlayStation 4 Pro to eliminate what small frame rate dips there are, and spend much more time at the optimal 1080p resolution. But that's all I've really got for you right now in terms of Titanfall 2 stress tests. So please do like and subscribe to support our work, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.